Hi, this is Dr. Mike Yuan. Well, the discussion has begun surrounding the Advanced Young Taiji Corrections training and the Bi Guan, what Bi Guan means, and what is meant by the path to greatness. This is the high end teaching that we're offering. There's quite a bit of need to clarify what exactly the training will entail. Remember, this is within the context of Taiji Chuan, yet it is advanced Taiji Chuan, and beyond advanced Taiji Chuan, it's the Taiji Chuan that I learned both from direct experience, but also in the methodology that I was given by Grandmaster Yang Shoujong in 1981. If you haven't been following all the episodes and updates up to this point, the last seven months, then you might have missed some of the salient points coming to the fore now that we're getting serious as to the nature of the training. I think the best way to respond to some of the reactions and questions that have come up as to what is the Biguan? Why would you call it the path to greatness? Beyond just the path to mastery, there's a greatness. I need to couch this in the fact that traditional Chinese culture has a upper level perception of life that is really not, not secret to um, the everyday culture, but just not something that people in general look at. Some elderly people who may have retained the memory of the standard. But the legends, as I mentioned, of the Shengren, Confucius's of Confucianism, the Laozi's of Taoism, and the Huineng's of Buddhism. So I'm introducing a different perception of traditional Chinese culture here because we're so used to viewing them as separate, as Taoist or Buddhist or even Confucian. But at the highest level they came together and without going too much into the history of Neo-Confucianism, Li Xue, the principal school, the enlightenment of the integration of these three came out in the most ordinary fashion in what one Sinologist had coined after she read my works, traditional Chinese cultural thought. So I think that might be the starting point to introduce this path to greatness because it's held within ordinary Chinese culture, yet it's not seen even by Chinese people today. Uh, even learned people, because it's not about reading books and knowing the classics as much as it's, in my experience, comes from having met the right people who are the most orthodox in the sense that the inquiry has been brought to the very end, as Confucius says. And then what you end up with is formless principle, an understanding of human nature and human life and of traditions that goes beyond form. When we're stuck, I would say, at a, at a second level inquiry, we have all the schools. So this is a Taoist thing, this is a, a Buddhist thing, or it's a mixture, but you're still using those labels and you're still conducting yourselves according to the rituals and behaviors of these so-called systems. Well, what my intention is, is to revive what I perceive to be the original and the version of traditional Chinese culture and wisdom and practices that will be of the greatest utility to helping humanity move forward from the current crisis. I always bear in mind what I read in the Economist magazine several years back. The front cover 
where they said that the biggest challenge for the world in the 21st century is going to be the struggle between China and the West. China experts today have outright stated that how can we come to any sort of resolution or traction on this issue if the West doesn't understand China, and the West doesn't understand China. That really resonates with me, given what I've uncovered in my China West search the last 40 plus years. So if the West doesn't understand China, there needs to be someone Chinese who's coming out and saying, China doesn't really understand the West either. By adopting Western innovation doesn't mean that you understand. There still is a rift and this is going to require a lot more dialogue and that's why I put up the advanced human training site to bring out the new China West science that I've developed that treats the epistemologies of Chinese and Western culture and science and thought as equals on a platform. It's so hard to do. You go to most universities and you see experts interpreting China maybe inadvertently or unintentionally through their own Western cultural lens. And we say, I see the same thing in China as well. And one of the reasons why it's so difficult to understand what a truly complementary system would look like that treats China and West as truly equals is the very same reason why we've lost this idea of the path to greatness. This is not just something Chinese, but they've specialized in higher learning for the last 5,000 years, being family and ancestor oriented, wanting to leave tradition for the future generations to not just preserve the old wisdom, but to advance it to other levels. And this has been my fortune to have come across teachers of both Asian and Western backgrounds who've held this consciousness. But where it comes to Taiji Tren and this mission we have of reinstating Yang Shou Zhong as the fourth generation patriarch of the Yang family tradition, that is not only his methods, but this consciousness he held that he may not have put words to. And I'm not even sure how many of the people close to him have the cultural background to recognize fully all that he embodied. But getting back to episode nine, when he mentioned to me in 1985, and this was a very clear statement. He said Jiang Sang Feng was the founder of Taiji Tren. Jiang Sang Feng was at the level of the Shengren, of the universal human. So there's a path to greatness embedded in that one statement. And then that corroborated for me some of the deeper aspects that he, maybe inadvertently as well, shared with me in 1981. I put these things all together, that the method is that of the path to greatness. So in my design of the program, I had to start with the high-end offering, and then from the high, highest offering that I could offer, work my way back down to offerings that would be relatable to most people. The programs, as I mentioned in the episode 10 is going to be six months and six months. That would be the full treatment where you would learn absolutely everything about the system to be able to be self-sufficient. The first six months would be called Biguan, which is where you close off the senses, so to speak, and fully dedicate yourself to learning the nuts and bolts of the high-end system that not only includes Taiji Tren, but includes 
a meta framework I recovered that I call the four powers and three practices. I'll have to dedicate another video to explaining what that is, but there's a single criteria that's needed in order for someone to not only feel it worth the monetary investment to do the biguan, but to realistically speaking, have the bandwidth and the energy and the purpose and the w will and the courage to embark on a full year of this. The first six months is called biguan, and the second six months, to borrow another Chinese term, is called xiuxing. And how it was explained to me is that after your basic training in higher learning in Chinese culture, any discipline, that would be tantamount to what I call the big one, the first six months of learning the nuts and bolts. And that includes the high-end concepts, but not yet able to fully integrate it into your life. Xiu Xing means to cultivate Xing. Uh, that's sort of the inner process to cultivate. Xing means to walk, to integrate the system over the next six months period into your daily life. This integration needs guidance. People are often left with tools, but then they're left on their own. But this is not what I experienced in my studies. I was guided in the same way that I've conceived this program. First, you learn all the knowledge, which is fundamentally different from, I'd say, anything that you'll have learned or known about Chinese tradition and even esoteric study. And then from there, that system is integrated into your life. What is it that would make you qualified for the high-end Biguan? There's a, there's a mid-range Biguan training that's being offered as well. But what would make you qualified and that is you need to have in your life a cause that goes beyond you, goes beyond your self-mastery. There's a cause that you want to fight for the world, for the betterment of humanity, to solve some big problem that's bigger than what you feel you presently have the tools to tackle, but the passion is so strong. And today, we're, the reason we're in the age of individual power, when I call the age of greatness, is because beyond practicing Taiji Chen for being, which is what a lot of the spiritual-oriented folks are doing with the Taiji Chen today, there's a becoming. There needs to be something in your life that is worth fighting for. It may be very distant from you, but that you, through the years, have finally decided, I'm going to go for it. I need to change something that is beyond me that would really help humanity. So it's not for everybody, of course. Some examples of things that I've personally been involved with the last 40 plus years as a clinician, as a teacher, and just as someone who's observed China's rise and the advent of the internet, and thirdly, the rise of the feminine or women in this 21st century. Together, they've created a, a crisis point, but a positive one for positive growth that a lot of people don't recognize, or if they recognize it, they don't have the power to come through. I recognize the potential to use Yang Shoujong's method to help you along this path. It's not the only one. There's other elements to the four powers and three practices that I'll have to bring out later. But I just wanted to send a message for those who have shown interest in the training that the high-end secrets could certainly be conveyed to you verbally. It could be talked about. And I'm anticipating that will eventually be leaked out and become part of the public domain. But before that happens, I want to take advantage of the window, the seam that's opening, where 
a few people will just synchronistically be ready with a cause that they could rightfully call a path with heart. And the conditions in their life are just right whereby I can begin to open this new inquiry of the path to greatness and to reassure you, to even give you confidence that this idea of greatness is something that is within your reach if you have a justifiable cause that you want to live for that's beyond yourself. And then all the secrets will open. Then you'll be able to really grasp the Taiji Chuan and, and the consciousness held by Yang Shoujong that, like I said, I'm not even sure he was able to articulate himself. But he did embody it. It was in the method. I'm not sure if the close descendants even hold this. They may be still just into the physical manifestation of, of the practice, which is a foundational piece, but it will never fully open to the spiritual unless your idea of spiritual goes beyond Hinayama path, which is just doing it for self-perfection. Buddhism sees it very clearly. There's the self-perfection path of the recluse, let's say, and there's the Mahayana path, the big wheel, small wheel versus big wheel, where there's the bodhisattva concept of living beyond your life for humanity, waiting for your liberation, where your liberation will only occur when you fulfill your soul potential. You give back to the degree that your soul has signed up for. I'm going into karmic talk here. It's not necessarily what I ascribe to, but it, it works in terms of describing the path to greatness and the training that can be offered. And one final thing, it's a huge delusion that's being broken open in this material age, and that is looking at a price point causes you to get serious, to want to understand what you're getting for it. That's a very necessary part of this path to greatness. So we can't be afraid of money. We could let go of a lot of old thoughts and ideas and assumptions that money corrupts or that power corrupts. The skies are opening in terms of the information from these old traditions to show us how it's possible to have money, to have power, and for you not to be corrupted, to apply it toward your mission. Okay, that's my inspiration for this morning. Thank you so much to many people who have been in contact with me that have inspired me to do this video to explain a little bit more about the training that's being offered. Okay, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much.